OK, in the second video, we're going to take a look at absolute uncertainties. And again, it's important that you have went through fully the first video and resolutions. Otherwise, this information will not make sense. There's two learning objectives we'll make our way through. The first one is just looking at really what absolute uncertainties are and what they are for certain instruments. And then there's some assessment in relation to absolute uncertainties as well. The absolute uncertainty in the quantity is the actual amount by which the quantity is uncertain. Now, the technique involved depends on whether there's a single or indeed a number of values recorded during a practical investigation. And the worked examples that follow will hopefully demonstrate exactly what that means. So we just want to perhaps pause the screen. You can now copy down the respective notes. So let's go through one example here. Um, we'll look at the more simplistic situation first of all, whereby a student has recorded a single value. In this case, a student measures the length of a pen to be 143 millimetres. Now, from this single statement and really measurement, a number of things can be established about this investigation. A, we should have some sort of an understanding as to the type of instrument that's been used. B, we should understand what the resolution of an instrument represents. And then C, after we go through this information, we'll have an idea of the absolute uncertainty of that measurement. Now, based on the previous lesson, we should be able to address criteria A and criteria B. So before I shoot on to the next slide, if you just want to pause the screen, copy down the respective notes and try yourself to answer parts A, part A and part B, please. But going through the solution, so part A, it should be a part that is a ruler and it could either be a 15 cm, 30 cm or meter rule, but it has to be a ruler given the fact it's only measuring to the nearest millimeter in this case. The resolution of the instrument as per the previous lesson is therefore plus or minus one millimeter. The absolute uncertainty of the instrument is also plus or minus one millimeter. So when you take a single reading during investigation, the absolute uncertainty is the resolution of the instrument. It really is as simple as that. So if you just now want to pause the screen, you can correct if needs be part A, part B, write down the solution to part C and a little bit of notes there in, in yellow as well. Right, let's just do some worked examples in relation to the absolute uncertainty, whereby again single measurements are taken. So again, if you just want to pause the screen, you can copy out the respective notes and then copy out questions one through to question five, pause, and then um, have a go at doing the questions yourself. And the answers really are as follows. So given the fact again that the absolute uncertainty is quite simply the resolution of the instrument, the first one you can see is measuring to the nearest tenth of a millimetre. We are talking about a vernier caliper here and therefore the absolute uncertainty is quite simply plus or minus 0 0.1 millimetres. The second one, the ammeter, measures to the nearest one hundredth of an ampere, so two decimal places. And similarly, the absolute uncertainty is therefore plus or minus 0 0.01 amperes. The voltmeter in this case you can see is only measuring the nearest one tenth of a volt. And so the absolute uncertainty is plus or minus 0 0.1 volts. Question four protractor is going to the nearest one degree you can see. And so the absolute uncertainty is plus or minus one degree. And finally, the time of 16.53 seconds, we can see again we're measuring the nearest one hundredth or the two decimal places. The absolute uncertainty is quite simply plus or minus 0 0.01 seconds. You may now pause the screen, uh, copy down any corrections or answers as necessary. And that really takes off the first method, which is quite straightforward for taking the single measurement and determining the absolute uncertainty. We'll now move on to option two, whereby a number of values have been recorded during an investigation. So let's say, for instance, the student measures the length of a pen a number of times and gets the following sets of results, 143 millimetres, 144 millimetres, 142, and finally 145 millimetres. 
This question requires the determination of the length of the pain and also the absolute uncertainty of that measurement. Now, you want you to pause the screen now to copy down the respective notes up as far as the word measurement, and then have a think to yourself, how might you go about trying to do that solution before we do so on the next slide? Now, the technique involved to get the answer, first of all, we have to quite simply work out the average length, which is quite straightforward. It's just going to be all your values added together divided by the total number of values and in this case that gives us 143.5 millimeters and again you might just want to pause the screen write that answer down as well as the notes please now to get the absolute uncertainty in the length we need to utilize the following technique and the absolute uncertainty is equal to plus or minus half the range of results and the range is equal to your maximum value that you have recorded, which you can see is 145. Take away the minimum value you've recorded, which you can see is 142, and then divide that by two. And in this particular example, the absolute uncertainty ends up being equal to plus or minus 1.5 millimeters. And you definitely want to probably pause the screen here and copy down the respective results and perhaps highlight the value there in relation to the absolute uncertainty in the middle of the, the slide. And therefore, our answer is 143.5 millimetres, plus or minus 1.5 millimetres. All right. However, there's a general rule that the absolute uncertainty cannot be quoted to more decimal places than your measuring instrument is capable of measuring. And in this question, of course, that's going to be to the nearest millimeter. And in fact, the final answer really should be expressed as 144 millimeters. Again, the resolution of this instrument is to the nearest millimeter. And to go to more decimal places would be suggesting to the reader that you can really measure to a tenth or even one hundredth of a millimeter, which of course the ruler cannot do. So we need to round in this case to the resolution of the instrument. We know it's a ruler. It must be rounded to the nearest one millimeter. In this case, one four four millimeters. And again, we also need to do the same with our absolute uncertainty. It needs to be rounded to the nearest millimeter. So the one point five millimeters ends up coming up to two millimeters. And if you just again want to pause the screen and copy down this full worked example on notes, please. Now, in relation to what I would recommend doing in the examination, I would recommend show the full digits for your average, in this case, average length. So that's 143.5 millimetres. If there happen to be more decimal places in there, put them in. That's perfectly fine. And then put down plus or minus the full digits for your absolute uncertainty. What I would recommend then doing is for your final answer, taking the actual value or length or current or voltage or time or temperature, whatever it might be, and then expressing it, rounding it to the resolution of your instrument. And then whatever resolution you have for your instrument, you need to round your absolute uncertainty to the same resolution as well, which really means to the same number of decimal places. So if you just want to pause the screen and copy down this exam hint as well. And that really ticks off that second technique. Uh, we can now, of course, understand, hopefully, what the absolute uncertainty of an instrument really means. I want you to work your way through this full worked example now. We've got that technique covered previously. So just pause the screen, copy the information, the question out fully, please, and have a go at doing the solution yourself. Now, whenever you determine the average current, we should be getting 2.4075 amperes and then really getting half the range. Again, just quite simply your max value 2.42, take away your minimum, divide that by two, and we should be getting 0 0.015 amperes. And so really the answer then should be expressed on the exam script. Again, put your full digits in first of all, your 2.4075 amperes, plus or minus the absolute uncertainty of 0 0.015 amperes. And then 
at the very end. Now we take those numbers to the appropriate number of decimal places. If you go back to the original readings, you can see all of these ampere readings are to the nearest one hundredth of an ampere or to the two decimal places. And so we need to do the same in relation to the ampere reading and then follow a similar structure. We need to round to two decimal places or sorry, two to the nearest one hundredth of an ampere in relation to your current. So the 0.015 amperes should then round to 0.02 amperes. And again, if you want to pause the screen if necessary and copy down the solution and make any corrections as required. If you now want to work your way through the second worked example, again, pause the screen, copy out, have a go, please. Again, you should get an average voltage of about 2.575 volts. And again, half the range then should come out to be 0.2 volts. The answer, again, I had expressed the full set of values, please. 2.575 volts plus or minus 0.2 volts. But now, of course, we have to think very carefully about the resolution of the instrument. You can see this instrument's only measuring the nearest one tenth of a volt or to one decimal place. And so we need to take that actual voltage and express it as 2.6. It rounds up to 2.6 volts. And look, the absolute uncertainty in this case is also given to one decimal place. That's perfectly fine. That will do for our final answer. And again, if needs be, you can pause the screen, make any corrections and copy down anything that is necessary. As a sort of final set of examples here, if you just want to pause the screen, and quickly copy out these more simplistic solutions whereby single values are now taken and quite simply express the absolute uncertainty for each one place. And the answers are quite straightforward, I think. So the first one, it's plus or minus 0.1 ampere, again going to the nearest tenth. Next one, 0 0.01 seconds, the nearest hundredth of a second, two decimal places. The voltage here is going to two decimal place is the nearest one hundredth of a volt, so should your absolute uncertainty as well. And you can see a vernier caliper is being used here to measure the nearest tenth of a millimeter. And of course, therefore, your absolute uncertainty should also be to the nearest tenth of 0 0.1 millimeters. And then this is the tractor going to the nearest degree. The absolute uncertainty should also therefore be plus or minus one degree as well. And again, if needs be, you can pause the screen and check against your respective solutions, please. And that really ticks off the requirements of this lesson two, all about absolute uncertainties. We've went through in detail and done further assessment there on single values, really, really straightforward, and perhaps a little bit more complex. We've looked at uh, practicals whereby a number of values were recorded, and we determined the absolute uncertainty there as well. And that finishes up this second lesson.